this time I'd like to introduce Richard. We always call on him to do our programs. He never needs a microphone and everybody can hear him. He likes to do it, so turn it over to Richard. First of all, some of you wondered about the chairs, why some of them were, most of them were turned this way, but there were about two rows turned the other way. Those are for people who want to listen but not watch. <laughs> it's no reflection on me, of course. A couple of other things I need to tell you. Um, I always get ready for these by doing things like checking my zipper. Uh, getting a haircut and of course I know that uh, I knew a long time ago I was going to do this program so I got a haircut in July <laughs> I'd like to uh, start off today by uh, saying welcome and then I also would like to uh, tell you give you some announcements uh, actually there are going to be three midnight auctions this time and this is this is very unique we've never had three at one convention at nine o'clock there will be a midnight auction here at ten o'clock uh, there will be one in Derby uh, oh I, I forgot to ask uh, Roland and Don is it okay if we come out to your house and have a and at eleven o'clock we're gonna go over to Schmoker's house and have a, a final one so uh, <laughs> By the way, this morning when we were uh, uh, at the Schmoker's house, we, uh, we did something real important. Uh, for those of you that went down in the basement, on the upper shelf in the far left-hand corner, there is a water pitcher in uh, Marigold, uh, probably European, unnamed. And we took it upon ourselves this morning, those of us that were in the basement, to come upon a name. And we have now named that unknown pitcher the NOLA. So I think that is very appropriate. And it's official. <laughs> Not sure why it's official, but it is. A couple of other announcements. <clears throat> you know that I'm from Texas. In February, uh, you can tell by my accent, in February, uh, we will be having our convention. And as we like to support this one, we like you to support ours. We will have a uh, nice auction. Uh, I called Roy frantically the other night when I tried to make my reservation. You know, I'm the one that put out the note that said, make sure you get yours early. and. Many of you have followed that advice, and I did a week or so later. And uh, I found out that all the rooms Saturday night were filled, which is not true. Roy has checked it out, and that was misinformation. There are three left. No. <laughs> uh, but anyhow, it's going to be a very, very good uh, uh, convention. Uh, Thistlewoods from... Uh, uh, Britain are going to be our speakers and it's it's always a lot of fun and we hope that you all will come in August I am pleading for you to also support us as a board member of ICGA and many who have badgered the leadership there to make ICGA really more than a regional convention um, the president has risked coming to the south and uh, the first week in August, ICGA will be in Dallas. And we expect to have a very good um, convention there, and we hope that you all will come. Swede Tilburg is going to auction his glass, so we're going to have good glass. And uh, we're going to have some good programs, and it should be a, a good convention. I have no jokes. Uh, however, Bob Allaire does, and uh, if you want to ask him about... <coughs> <clears throat> if you want to ask him about total disability, uh, go ahead. 
Uh, you men probably will feel real comfortable in doing that, and you women, this is 1994, and you need to be liberated, so ask him too. I do have a true story, um, and one thing. Some of you saw me drinking a cup of coffee right before I came up, and uh, I, uh, I did that not because I was thirsty, but as part of a timing device, because I don't want to drag this out too long. <laughs> The other thing I would tell you is that, uh, and this is a true story, and it kind of made me, makes me laugh every time I think of it. Uh, Carol and I have an 18, 19 year old adopted daughter, um, and on my birthday, she went to Target with her boyfriend to buy me a birthday present. And he just was kind of tagging along and not really paying any attention until she bought me a box of diapers. <laughs> and. He then, uh, and she didn't say anything to him. She just said, you know, I'm buying my dad a birthday present, and she got me this nice big box of uh, uh, disposable diapers, um, and then wrapped them up and gave them to me, and he just had this real quizzical look at, uh, on his face all weekend. All right. Uh, <clears throat> today we're here to talk about Northwood Carnival Glass. First thing that some of you probably have noticed uh, and uh, certainly will pick out. Uh, there are a couple of non-Northwood pieces up there in my estimation. And, uh, and, and we'll talk about those as we go. But we're going to talk about Northwood. Harry Northwood was born in 1860 and he lived until 1919. He was actually born on June 30th in the Sturbridge area of England. One of ten children. Uh, and I find that interesting because when we had four children and would go into a restaurant, people would go, wow, look at that size of that family. Can you imagine having 10? At 14, he became an apprentice with Stevens and Williams. And if you know anything about art glass uh, and have knocked around a bit, you know that Stevens and Williams put out some very, very nice glass. So he had a good background. At age 21, he came to America. And coming to America, uh, in this day and age, back in the 1880s, post-Civil War period, uh, it, it wasn't like getting on the Concord or a 737 and coming to America. It was a big move for anybody to make that kind of a move. And interestingly enough, a man came with him, his cousin, Thomas Dugan. And that, of course, is a name that we will continue to hear. Uh, as we take a look at uh, Northwood. His first job was with a company called Hobbs Brookenier Bruken, uh, Glass Company in Wheeling, West Virginia. And if you take a look at the history of glass, a lot of it was made in that West Virginia, Pennsylvania area. He, he, he uh, 20 years later, bought out that company, by the way. In 1887, he purchased a vacant uh, glass company uh, called Union Flint in Martins Ferry, Ohio, and he uh, began producing, uh, producing his first glass in 1888, mold-blown opal, rubina, encased glass. In 1892, he started a factory in Ellsworth, Ellswood, uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, he stopped production there four years later in 1896, then moved to Indiana, Pennsylvania, always has amazed me some of the names in Pennsylvania, Indiana, Pennsylvania, California, Pennsylvania, and so on. There he began making custard and his first pressed opalescent glass. Uh, he began making the molded script uh, trademark Northwood, as you see on many of the uh, early custard pieces. Thomas Dugan, his cousin, was his plant manager. Eventually, and if you remember your history, you probably don't, but you should, um, it's during this time that Truss, remember Theodore Roosevelt was the trust buster? Well, trusts were very common at this time where companies would turn over the uh, direction of their companies to a trust. It was really price fixing is what we would probably call it today. And he did that with his company, and it was turned over to a trust called the National Glass Company. By 1902, he became pretty disenchanted, uh, uh, disgusted with them, and uh, he uh, left National Glass and purchased, as I told you, the company that he started with, the Hobbs, 
Brockenier uh, factory in Wheeling, West Virginia. In 1905, he began using the, his trademark, the circle with the N and with the line under it. Some of you probably have heard James Mizell talk about uh, that trademark. And I, I have no idea if this is true, but I like it, and so I'm going to tell you what some people have said. Napoleon, as you know, in France, had a major ego. And he went around putting an N with a line under it on many of the things that were built during his era. Northwood, like many creative people, also had an ego, I suspect. And he liked what Napoleon had, did, had uh, done uh, years earlier. And so he came up with that uh, trademark. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but I like it. And so uh, I told you about it. In 1908, in 1908, he began uh, producing iridized glass. And of course, it was not called Carnival. Uh, eventually, over 100 patterns were produced. The first we call marigold. He called it golden iris. By 1912, pastels had been introduced. Grape and cable, as you know, last year we talked about all the shapes, over 70 shapes. Uh, and of course, he died by 1919. I want to go back for just a minute. Fenton began producing what we call carnival glass, iridized glass, in 1907. It's a competitive world out there, and Northwood began to try and compete. And the way that he could compete was by using old molds. And so one of the very first pieces that he came up with was this cherry and cable. Cherry and cable, which was not produced uh, as carnival glass in the beginning, but as pressed glass, not iridized. And so he began using his old molds. And you've heard the talks about how much molds cost then, and of course, uh, they're still expensive today. So he began by using patterns like cherry and cable, valentine, near cut. In 1910, grape and cable was introduced. That certainly is the backbone of Northwood. In 1911 and 1912, listen to what he began selling. Hearts and Flowers, Peacocks on the Fence, Nippon, Acorn Burrs, Daisy and Drake, Peacock at Urn, Peacock at the Fountain, the Town Pump, the Corn Vase, the Bushel Basket, and Pastels were introduced. And Northwood went in the red that year. They didn't make their money that year. And it's because they introduced all these new patterns. They had to pay for the molds. They couldn't uh, uh, make enough money in that one year. By 1914 and 1915, Northwood turned back to custard again. And there's where we get some of the rare iridized or pearl that we call it today. He also experimented with some marigold on custard, like in the Rose Show and the Hearts and Flowers compote. Uh, it, this is when he made the tree trunk vases. In 1916, he stopped major production of what we call carnival glass. Did he make some after that? Of course. But n most of his pieces by then were already in uh, production. What does that tell you? Number one, no red. No red. Because red is not going to be produced until a number of years later. Speaking of colors, very little peach opal. Very little true peach opal produced by Northwood. Uh, there are a couple of grape and cable bonbons around, a beaded cable rose bowl. Probably experimental pieces. And who was producing Peach Opal during this era, his cousin Thomas Dugan. Another interesting story is about Aqua Opal. There is some pretty good evidence to indicate that a man by the name of George Mortimer, Mortimer in 1912 came up with a color that we now call Aqua Opal. 
a favorite color for many of us. There is some evidence to say that Mortimer hired Northwood to produce iridized glass in aqua opal. And here's where the theory comes about why a lot of the aqua opal is not marked with an N, but a lot of it is. There's some indication to show that uh, Mortimer got out of the business, and as a result of that, Northwood probably purchased his molds and began uh, using the N. Is it a true story? I don't know, but uh, it's pretty good evidence to indicate that. In terms of colors, marigold, pastel marigold, purple or amethyst, lavender, black amethyst, green, ice green, lime green, lime green opalescent, white, cobalt blue, ice blue, ice blue opalescent, sapphire blue, reninger blue, teal, olive, Vaseline, whorehound smoke, aqua, aqua opalescent, pearl, marigold on custard, peach opalescent, blue slag, and amber. Now, are you going to tell me that Harry Northwood sat around and made up a list of some of the possible colors? You know, maybe he went to his children's Crayolas and said, I think I'll use some of these colors on my, on my glass. I don't think so. I don't think that anybody ever set out to make some of these colors. Uh, some of them, I think, are, are just uh, poor production. As a result of that, uh, one of the great things about uh, uh, Northwood is the myriad of colors that we have. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen yet, this is a Xerox copy of the Carl Burns book that just came out, The Collector's Guide to Northwood's Carnival Glass. Excellent. Uh, excellent book. And I, I suspect, John and Lucille, you got some in your... Yeah. If you don't have one, you need to get one. Winter's coming. Uh, nothing to do on cold winter nights. Monday night football will be done soon. You've got to have a book to read this winter. Get one of these. Also, if you don't have the uh, Northwood, the Wheeling Years, uh, another good book that uh, I think you ought to have. Well, that's a, a quick history lesson on Northwood. What I'm going to do is go down to the far end. Uh, we're going to uh, take a look at this glass. And by the way, I can say this, <clears throat> and I think it's important for me to say, uh, people have risked by bringing their glass, by taking it out of their cabinets. Uh, you don't want to be the person to chip it, so don't touch. Look, but don't touch. Uh, if you want to look at a piece and feel it and touch it, ask the owner. The owners will come up afterwards. Um, you would feel bad, but the owner would probably feel worse if we got it chipped. So hang in there with us. Fine cutting roses in a really, uh, in a uh, rather, uh, really a, an amethyst. But look at the iridescence on this. And this has the uh, fancy interior. Uh, all you can tell people, uh, the new beginners, the people that uh, come up to you and say, I understand you know about carnival glass and so on. Uh, good color, good iridescence, name of the game. I'm going to talk about damage uh, a little bit later. Uh, ice blue, uh, dandelion, uh, absolutely uh, a gorgeous piece. Um, I guess I can't get enough of ice blue. Uh, I, I like the color. I like blue in, uh, uh, in general. But neat piece. One of my favorites, um, uh, peach. Uh, we were at the uh, Mitchell auction. I was at the Mitchell auction. Carol wasn't with me. And we really, really wanted the white water set. But it was number 155, and the blue one was 154. And I had decided what I would pay for the white one, and I really wasn't all that interested in the blue one, but it was very pretty. But the blue one came first, and I got it. And I got it relatively cheaply for that time. And then the white one came right after that, and I got that one also. Uh, and they, for the longest time, were the only two water sets that we, uh, we collected. Uh, the um, uh, peach tumblers are typically uh, very pretty, uh, many times electric, like this one is. Town pump, uh, a favorite. I think most people that have a collection want to have a town pump. Um, 
This one, of course, is in purple. They only came in three colors. The confusing thing, of course, to dealers is that that junky old marigold junk, crap, whatever you want to call it, is better than this one in terms of value. And that is very difficult for dealers to understand. They just cannot understand how marigold can be more valuable than uh, dark. How many colors are there? Town, town pumps, three, you bet. Here we have a uh, good luck. And you know, it's so interesting to me uh, to watch glass cycle. By the way, this was one of the few pieces I didn't have to put a little note on uh, in case I would forget the name. <laughs> right there in front. Uh, and I, I forget about good luck being a lettered piece, but it, it certainly is a lettered, uh, lettered piece. It's amazing to me how some of the patterns cycle. Uh, what, five or six years ago, good luck was so hot and everything was uh, just going great guns. Good luck is a little depressed right now, and now is the time to buy good luck. Uh, because it's not um, um, as expensive as it used to be. This one has the uh, basket weave back on it. Uh, they will also come with a rib back. Um, real pretty piece, amethyst. Here is an embroidered mums piece, um, and it is in a aqua. You can probably see it from the back. Uh, like the, its cousin, Hearts and Flowers, uh, not a lot of these pieces around. This one would bring uh, uh, very good, very good money. Uh, nice iridescence on the front, a rib back. Speaking of Thomas Dugan, uh, Nautilus, if you look in Edwards, he says uh, Dugan slash Northwood or Northwood slash Dugan. Why would so many people, why would so many of us uh, attribute this to uh, Dugan? because of the peach opal uh, uh, Nautilus pieces. And uh, so my personal opinion uh, is that this is a really pretty piece and a very desirable piece, but not Northwood. A uh, drapery rose bowl in aqua opal. Uh, this is one of the aqua opal pieces that's moderately easy to uh, come by. Uh, but like so many pieces, all the way from ugly to beautiful. Um, and this one is a, uh, a real pretty one. Good piece to have. Star of David in bows. Uh, dome footed. And this is an interesting color. It's actually green. The base, base color is, uh, is green. Uh, there are a couple of these in the uh, auction tomorrow in Amethyst. And I have a friend who has a friend that is Jewish and asked me to uh, uh, pick up one of these pieces, maybe, tomorrow. Little hand grip plate in strawberry. Uh, gorgeous iridescence. The one side up uh, makes it hand grip. Uh, two sides up makes it double hand grip or card tray. Um, I think I like the other names other than double hand grip. Uh, but this one is hand grip plate. Neat. And notice the difference in size. That's a small, small little plate. Greek key plates. All Greek key plates are tough to find. Uh, when you come up, look at the iridescence on this one. It is just absolutely uh, beautiful. A rainbow effect. Uh, kind of a simple pattern in, in some ways, but uh, really a pretty, pretty plate. One of my favorites has always been Hearts and Flowers. And here is a uh, tough color, ice green. Uh, I'd like to have an ice green plate, don't have an ice green plate. Uh, always, um, I think, a pretty, pretty pattern. Certainly a very busy pattern in terms of the work. Here is an opalescent piece. Uh, if you could go and iridize it, uh, it would be even better piece, <laughs> in, in my estimation. Um, I'm very tempted when I see the diamond point, when I see these vases um, uh, in the malls, because they're, they're very, very pretty. Um, but we only have so many square feet in our house, and so I, I usually pass them up. Let me ask you a question. Is this older or younger than Carnival? Older. Uh, opalescent glass is older than carnival glass. Feathers vase, 
uh, green with a marigold overlay, uh, pretty vase. I love vases to go into the cabinets in the corners and in between plates and, uh, and so on. Here is a graceful compote. Um, interesting piece. You see these uh, out in the malls in Marigold in particular. Uh, pretty green, pretty green color. And you'll notice that a lot of these are not signed with Northwood. Northwood probably would like to lay claim to this, but uh, uh, it's not. Uh, at least in my book. Uh, this is an absolutely gorgeous piece, chicken bowl, or <laughs> uh, most people call it farmyard. Uh, I always remember the story. I was in uh, uh, Lawrence, Kansas at um, yeah, Weaver's, Weaver's uh, auction, and Scott Brown, well, I just about went blank on all of it. Scott Brown was helping uh, uh, John Woody out at the auction, and uh, he got one of these uh, farmyard bowls, and he started off at $25, because the tumbler before had started off at $25, and people are going, no, 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 up, up, you know, we didn't want to be there all night. And so he, uh, you know, told $3,200 or some, you know, fair price back then, and so he put it down, and he said, okay, folks, that was great. And he then picked up a, a tumbler, and he said, all right, now here we got a beautiful tumber, and it's a uh, acorn burrs, and uh, we'll start this at $2,000. <laughs> and people are going, no, 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 no. And so he finished it up, and it brought $85 or whatever, and he put it down, and he said, bring me some more of them chicken bowls. He said, let's. <laughs> Wild rose. Um, now here's one to watch for. This one is in green. Watch for them in blue. You don't find many of them in blue. Now, that doesn't mean it's worth $4,000, but uh, it's still an interesting piece. Um, and really a lot of intricate work uh, up on the top and kind of a vulnerable piece to uh, uh, easily damage, damage. This one does have an N in it. Richard, you see so many of those in green opal, uh, you know, blue opal, white opal. Has anybody found them iridized? No. <laughs> I checked the room. Nobody, no, not that I, uh, not that I know of. Um, uh, ice blue, uh, corn vases to me are, are um, uh, absolutely lovely. Um, um, I mean, there's so many colors. They're a little bit like the uh, bushel basket. You can line them up clear across the room because there are so many colors uh, in bushel basket. Here's a piece that I've always thought was uh, um, maybe an underrated piece, but always, not always pretty, but so many times pretty. Um, point, point, lattice and poinsettia, or poinsettia and lattice. Uh, I always have to look both places because I never remember which one comes first. But uh, look at the color on that. Look at the iridescence on that. Uh, look at the intricate pattern on that. It, it's just really, really pretty. And there aren't a whole lot of colors in this pattern. They're just, uh, I don't know if I've ever counted up. What, three, four? Yeah. Uh, not, not many uh, colors around. Here's a vase that uh, usually has problems too. Oh, this is advertising. I forgot to look. This is Howard, thank you. Howard Furniture. Um, it's a four pillars vase, uh, and it's in green. And on the very bottom of it, uh, it says Howard Furniture. It says some other things, too, and I can't, quite frankly, I can't read it. Uh, and so when you go into the malls, pick up every piece because you never know what will be on the bottom. You never know when you pick up that old Fenton Holly marigold bowl that it might not have a little milk glass on the bottom or that it might not have Vaseline uh, or whatever. So you've got to, you just, you have to uh, uh, check all of these out. This is a vase, by the way, four pillars vase. Again, not a whole lot of colors. Probably the most common color is aqua opal. Isn't that funny? I mean, there, there are a couple of patterns like that. It's like ice green peacock's plates. Uh, ice green is so tough, but not in that uh, particular 
uh, piece. Uh, aqua opalescent, uh, four pillars face, always nice to have um, in a collection. Sunflower bowl. Uh, many of these have very, very interesting iridescence and color. And this one is uh, absolutely beautiful uh, with nice iridescence and uh, nice color also. This one comes in a Renninger blue, which uh, is an interesting uh, color. Um, a wishbone, and this one is in blue, and uh, it's a little different. I've had probably four or five of these, and the others have all been much more flat and uh, different iridescence on it. Uh, this is a tough one uh, based on color. You can find amethyst uh, relatively readily, uh, and marigold and, and some other colors, but blue is a uh, real hard one to hard one to find. This is a piece that I got not too long ago. I bought it as whorehound. Um, I really don't know what the color is. It's got a basket weave back on it, uh, which you typically don't see on on these uh, stippled strawberry pieces. Stippling made all the difference in the world, personally. Uh, it just seemed to bring out the iridescence and the color, and it has just um, uh, been a real pleasure. I heard something the other day, and I'll ask you, I do this with uh, students when I teach class, I often ask them to uh, give me their opinion. Uh, somebody told me that uh, there's a story going around that Northwood, when their molds were wearing out, stippled the background. I have a problem with that. Uh, it doesn't make sense to me. And uh, uh, it, it seems to me that what would wear out would be the strawberries, not the background. The smooth background uh, has no pressure on it. It has no uh, wearing. And so it seems to me that if you stippled the background, um, it, it, I don't know. So afterwards, we'll, we'll vote or do something. But uh, <laughs> by the way, uh, Jim was in, Jim Seek was in my room last night, and he said, what color do you call this? And I said, well, I bought it as whorehound. And I don't know if it's, I don't, I'm not sure I know what whorehound is. He said that uh, somebody once called a piece like the, the, that he had in an auction, root beer. But. Uh, we don't need any more colors, so we'll just <laughs> say it's different. Uh, acorn burrs uh, in amethyst. Uh, one of the few water sets Carol and I have is a marigold acorn burrs. And for the longest time, we had one beautiful marigold acorn burrs tumbler. And Carol wanted me to find a pitcher. And so one day, locally in Dallas, I found a pitcher, and it was beautiful and it had four beautiful tumblers with it. And I said, I put them out in front of her, and I said, we, we typically only have one tumbler with a pitcher. And I said, which tumbler would you like to keep? And she looked at them, and she said, all of them. And so then I had to go out and find another tumbler. <laughs> Leaf columns, uh, base. these come in some real interesting colors. You can find them in the ices. You can find them in... Uh, weird colors like smoke and so on. Uh, and personally, I like the short stubby vases uh, as well as some of the uh, big ones. Uh, speaking of pretty vases, uh, drapery. Uh, could it be any more emerald green with beautiful iridescence and three perfect feet? I don't think so. Um, I don't know. Roy, how many green ones are there? Well, there's obviously at least three, right? <laughs> there are a lot of these. There are a lot of these patterns that you can find in all sorts of colors, and then all of a sudden you come to a color like green. Uh, and, and Northwood is pretty skimpy on green in some patterns and real skimpy on blue in other patterns. Like, can I say the grape and cable word? Even though, okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, this is a pretty piece. Uh, this came in the mail to me, uh, oh, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, I guess. Um, it's uh, a daisy and plume, uh, footed. The feet are so vulnerable. 
Uh, typically, this edge here, you could almost cut your finger on these, these uh, legs. Uh, and typically, they're going to have little chiggers on them, probably in the making, just pulling them out of the mold with a uh, blackberry interior. Uh, I had picked one up in North Carolina. I was working there a couple of weeks ago, and I picked one up, and then I got one in the mail, uh, almost right on top of it. But interesting piece. Uh, and in the same uh, package I got in the mail was uh, another corn vase. And this, I always thought, was the prettiest amethyst corn vase I'd ever seen. And uh, when I un unwrapped the other one, um, I brought it into the uh, den where Carol was watching the news, and I said, which one is the prettiest? And she immediately said that one. So this one became expendable. <laughs> Corn vases come in lots of colors, um, really uh, a, a nice cross-section. Again, a lot like the uh, bushel basket. Uh, this one is, uh, <clears throat> if you have any questions about this, talk to Ardana about this. This is actually called Jack in the Pulpit. You know why? Because Ardana told me that's what it's called. That's why. Uh, and it's not a Jack in the Pulpit shape. It is not. But uh, she tells me that her research says that uh, that's actually what it's called, even though it's not a Jack in the Pulpit shape. So remember this. Uh, things that seem to be something maybe aren't. <laughs> Tree trunk vase in uh, amethyst. Uh, notice how squatty it is. Uh, I, uh, tree trunk bases are a real favorite of mine. I love the squatty ones. Uh, and then uh, look at the uh, uh, look at the blue. And uh, the bases are actually about the same size, uh, probably within an eighth of an inch or so. But they sure look different, don't they? Because of the squattiness of this one, and th this one is no giant either. I brought this in just because, this to me is a, a real strange piece. It's a sad piece. It's um, peacocks on the fence. It is uh, uh, pretty. It is pie crust edge. It is beat to hell. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. It's got all that little extra glass in between the points. Uh, and it's also got a flake on it, but it's so pretty. And then, I don't know if you can see from out there, you can see it's a weird color. Uh, to me, this is smoky lavender because it's really not lavender, but it's really not smoky, but it sure as heck isn't amethyst. So I, I guess it's got to be uh, smoky, um, some of you. And you can, you, you're welcome to pick this one up because it can't get beat up much worse than it is. <laughs> This is not a jack-in-the-pulpit vase, but it is a jack-in-the-pulpit shape uh, with the back up and the front down, and it's a thin rib. I, I'm sorry that it's called thin rib because we have fine rib, and this thin rib isn't as fine as the fine rib, and it's probably a little bit confusing, but uh, it's still a pretty vase, and it, this one is uh, amethyst. Uh, blackberry and Ray's uh, little compote, one that you don't see very often, probably passed by by a lot of people. Uh, this one is in green, and a little bit different green, not an olive green, but uh, certainly not a, uh, a green green. Here are the sorts of things that you got to look for in the malls, uh, and I go much too fast when I buzz through a mall. Here's a little corn cruet with a um, stopper, and it is iridized. Uh, you just, there are only, what, two or three of these around, and this would be real easy to miss in a mall when you're buzzing just looking for uh, marigold and dark, uh, as Edwards used to uh, refer to carnival. Uh, but neat little piece, uh, handled with a stopper, a little corn cruet, neat piece. Here is an interesting piece. Uh, when you come up, if you want to look at this, uh, check it out. It's got some opal on the back. It's uh, good luck. It's blue. Uh, there's not a lot of blue opal around. Uh, and the opalescence is really in between the points and on the back. Uh, but it's there. Let's take a look at it. 
Here is a uh, blue Nippon. And again, this is one of those pieces where you'll find all sorts of other colors, but you won't find uh, blue. I don't know, how many of these are there? Just, I mean, just one? <laughs> you are looking at. I mean, it just, uh, it just doesn't, it's not around. Um, double loop, a couple of interesting pieces, uh, both in blue. Uh, iridescence inside, it looks green, but it is uh, actually blue. Uh, kind of a, I um, hate to say simple pattern, but uh, not a complex pattern, but uh, really a neat piece. I really like this one in particular. Not that I don't like that one, but. <laughs> Here's where I was going to sing a song that some country western guy did, Amaryllis by Morning, wasn't that the name of it? <laughs> but I can't sing, and so I'm not going to. Um, a couple of uh, little uh, amaryllis compotes, uh, and notice how, how different they are. They're, uh, one of them is real flat, and the other one is deep. Tough ones to find. Uh, super pretty iridescence on this one, and this one too. But uh, two uh, cute little patterns you don't see very much of. Huh? Well, I see we did get a little springtime. Somebody asked why we didn't have springtime up here, and I said, because it's fall time. and. Uh, but here is springtime. Uh, this to me is one of the neatest, this is the covered sugar in springtime green, one of the neatest um, table sets. Uh, I love the shape of the, uh, the butter dish in particular, but a really, really pretty uh, pattern for a table set. This piece, um, Marion Hartung wrote about this piece there was a young man uh, living north of Dallas uh, who was uh, going to law school at Georgetown University and uh, got interested in carnival glass and found this in Tennessee and uh, mailed it to Marion Hartung and she wrote about it. It's elegance. It, uh, uh, for a long time, there were some real questions about who made it and I suppose some people might still, but. Uh, uh, I think it's pretty sure to say that it is a uh, Northwood pattern. Uh, also, uh, there's plate. Uh, there are very few pieces of elegance, and I believe there is a uh, marigold piece of elegance uh, also. Two? Thank you. I have prompters in the back helping me here. <laughs> um, leaf and beads, nut bowl. Uh, white uh, rose bowls aren't exactly common. But uh, this is a very uncommon piece uh, in the uh, nut bowl shape. And of course, it came from the same mold, just flared differently, but uh, really pretty, and very pretty and white. I don't know whose this is, but I used to own one. Ah, yeah. I love the mailman. <clears throat> uh, I got this the other day, and uh, it's a good luck plate in uh, nice blue, nice blue, not ice blue. And uh, it, to me, this is what iridescence is about. And uh, I love boxes uh, when they come, <laughs> especially if they don't rattle. Yeah. Um, four pillars, different size in uh, a cobalt blue. And uh, you don't see these around. I have no idea how many of these there are, but uh, uh, I don't know whose this is, but it's, it's um, I don't see them around. Uh, I don't know how many of them there are, but uh, not a lot. Neat piece. And isn't this a lovely bowl? <laughs> not only is it lovely, it's also beautiful. Uh, green, lovely, uh, and again, a piece that, uh, uh, you know, it's got a back, it's got the uh, leaf and beads on the back and the lovely on the inside. A tough one to find, what, two or three different colors? Is there marigold? I know there's purple. And most of them that I've seen are, uh, are real pretty, and this one is lovely. Here is a uh, uh, fine cut in roses uh, in custard, 
uh, and it's got the uh, interior and I, I assume there's some faint iridescence on here and they typically are very faint uh, on the custard. But when you see these, check them out. I see all sorts of the other Northwood patterns in custard and uh, neat pieces, uh, good ones to uh, grab. Here is a strange color. Um, butterfly uh, with the plain back. Whose is this? What color? Smoke. Smoke? Okay. Uh, lights are right up here. Really a different color. If you look at the base, it's, it's uh, real definitely a, a smoky color. Um, strange color. And down here we have a green one with uh, some really brilliant iridescence. Lots of pink. And next to it is the reason why you pick up all of them. This is the uh, butterfly. And uh, on the back, it's got the threaded uh, exterior. And the threaded exterior raises this one by hundreds of dollars, um, probably four or five hundred dollars. So whenever you see these, if you don't like butterflies, check for the threaded back because uh, these are, are hard. Did Northwood put that threaded exterior on anything else? Not that I can think of. Anybody think of a threaded exterior? Not that I can think of. Okay. Here is a little uh, uh, wishbone and spades plate. Absolutely gorgeous, but Dugan, in my estimation. Uh, certainly it is a, a Dugan, but a neat little plate. Little plates have gotten very popular, and uh, uh, I urge you to watch for them. I haven't the foggiest what the name of this is. Whose is it? Lightning flower. Okay, thank you. That's what happens when you go to the bathroom right before you do a program. <laughs> that somebody brings something up there and puts it that... Uh... Now, this is the sort of piece that you could miss in a mall real easily because it reminds me of some of the very latest carnival uh, that I'm not interested in and walk right on by it. So watch for these kinds of pieces. Honestly, don't know a whole lot about it. Uh, it's got some stippling in the bottom, though. Uh, I got asked a question on this. You told me the other day, not carnival, but it is Northwood. Verdi or. It's what? Verdi or. Verdi or, but it's a Shasta Daisy. Ah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Northwood made a lot of glass over the years. This is one of them. Super, super uh, Rocho plate. I mean, just uh, that's my kind of marigold. If it's not yours, I'll take it. But <laughs> uh, this, to me, is absolutely gorgeous uh, marigold. Uh, I guess we'd call this the pumpkin, as we're sometimes, but it's the pink and the dark marigold that really makes this plate. Um, it's always fun, isn't it, to try and explain to our friends that this is a plate, and they look at it and they say, how would you ever get your peas off of this <laughs> as a plate? A uh, really interesting picture raspberry in white. Uh, if you haven't, uh, ask Steve to show you the picture that he's got in his room because he's got a blue one and there are only, what, two of those? What we think, a couple of them. No one, and I always say that, you know, people that say it's the only one, no, it's the only one we know about because there are all sorts of people out there that don't tell us that they've got this stuff. And when you go to buy a used car for your kid and you walk through their dining room, you see it, and you ask them to sell it to you, and then they say, no, it was grandma's, and no, they're not interested. Then you tell them how much you'd pay for it, and they become interested sometimes. <laughs> a pretty, this is a really pretty amethyst, uh, strawberry plate, uh, basket weave back, and it's not stippled. Uh, those that are stippled uh, usually bring the price way up. This one would bring good money because uh, it's so so pretty. 
Here is a uh, really pretty piece of uh, wishbone, and it is a uh, chop plate, and there are only a couple of these and in green, and pay attention for these out there because there aren't very many of them. If you find one, three, darn. <laughs> You know, as soon as you, you mention that it's one of a kind or are there only two known, uh, sometimes other ones will come out of the woodwork, which is, which is good. Speaking of Nippon, here is a really dark, uh, fiery amethyst, really. Um, can't really tell by the iridescence, but a really pretty one with the uh, basket weave back. This was an interesting uh, plate that was brought in just a few minutes before we started. Uh, it's a strawberry with the uh, back pattern uh, uh, basket weave, and you can see the back pattern pa uh, uh, through. But when you come up here, this looks like your car when it comes out of the car wash before they dry it off. It looks wet, and it's got a, it's, it's really a, like a radium kind of, of finish on it. And although it's, it's, um, not a, a rare plate, uh, the finish on this is spectacular. So take a look at it. Don't touch, but take a look. I had to ask what this was, luster and flute, a simple little uh, pattern. Uh, and you see these in the mall, but a pretty little piece with some uh, a nice back uh, pattern on it. Tornado vases have always interested me. Uh, this one is amethyst and it is ribbed and it uh, is the smaller of the uh, uh, tornado vases. And there are some strange colors in tornado vases also. And uh, you don't see these very often. If you see it in a shop, undoubtedly a dog will have taken a bite out of the bottom and it will not be uh, uh, very pretty. Any doubt about the color on this one? Vaseline, uh, it's got some nice iridescence on it. Um, baskets have always been a lot of fun, I think, for a lot of people because you can get them all the way from $7,500 on up to mega dollars. Mega dollars. <laughs> Daisy and Plume in uh, ice blue. This would go good with my candy dish. Um, and it does have the uh, blackberry interior. Again, a tough color to uh, find in ice blue. Also comes in ice green, by the way. And here is a nice, nice green. And this is uh, oriental poppy. Um, water pitchers are finally coming back, water sets are finally coming back. And they really should, because this is a gorgeous uh, uh, water pitcher. It's a gorgeous pattern. Uh, there are several colors that it comes in. And they were so depressed for the last 10 years in terms of price that you should have bought them before now, because the price has really gone up on them. Here's one of my favorite colors up here. Uh, this is, you know, peacocks on the fence with a uh, uh, pie crust edge. And it defies the colors that we typically list. And I rattled off that whole list to you. Well, this is apple green. And I think that is a totally appropriate uh, color for this. But this is just a really different green. And it's not just the iridescence, which is kind of soft on it, but uh, the, the, the whole piece itself is uh, absolutely beautiful and uh, different. Here is a little uh, compote that uh, uh, you don't see very often, in particular in this color. Only uh, uh, three colors, green, amethyst, and uh, marigold, blossom time, and uh, neat pattern, and uh, a pretty, pretty pattern. I remember the first time I bought one, I was at an elderly lady's house. She had called me. She had one compote. She wanted to sell it, and I didn't have the foggiest what it was. But uh, I had driven across Dallas to uh, get to her house, and I decided I was going to buy it uh, anyhow. 
and uh, it turned out to be uh, better than I thought. Leaf and beads in green. Uh, again, a, a rose bowl that comes in a, a series, uh, a variety of colors. Uh, green is not very common uh, to find. Memphis Punch Cup in white. Northwood did not make a lot of geometrics. Uh, this is one of the geometrics that they uh, made uh, fruit bowls and punch sets. Holly, uh, again, a uh, uh, kind of a simple pattern, but pretty piece in uh, green. This piece should not be here. It should be in Texas. <laughs> it is an E.A. Hudson uh, Furniture Company, uh, 711 Travis Street, which is in uh, downtown Houston. And, uh, but doesn't have to live in Houston. It could live in Plano. And uh, it's got the basket weave uh, back on it. Um, John Resnick did his little book on uh, uh, lettered pieces, and he was able to find out that this actually was in Houston. Here's another piece that I think a lot of, of, of people like to have in their collections. Uh, certainly peacocks have been very popular. Peacock at the urn, master ice cream in uh, ice green, uh, very popular. Uh, it shows off so well in the back of a cabinet or on the wall or any place you want to put it. But uh, I think a really pretty piece. And it's fun. Not many people collect them with the uh, master and six little ones just because of space and perhaps money, but uh, a neat piece. Oh, help. What is this? Basket of roses. I was thinking earlier when I looked at this, this was you know just a grape and cable stippled uh, bonbon. And I, so I didn't look at it. I forgot that we already did grape and cable. So um, basket of roses. How many, Diane? Yeah, a handful or a couple of handfuls. Uh, and this one is in uh, amethyst. And it uh, certainly has a good amount of stippling, which again, perhaps, uh, goes against the idea that they stippled when the mold was old. If there are only a dozen or 15 of these around, um, what did they do uh, with the, the other 4,000 that went before it? Fruits and flowers uh, in uh, uh, an electric blue basket weave back and stippled. And again, that stippling comes into uh, play because uh, some of the pieces are stippled. Not a lot of them. Certainly, uh, what, 10 or 15% of them, I would think, but certainly not the majority. And speaking of stippling, how about that for a plate? Rib back, stippled, uh, three fruits. Um, it can't be any nicer than that. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm sorry? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet. Uh, beautiful plate. Grape Harbor. Uh, tankard. Uh, again, a good variety of these. And one that I've owned several times over the years and would like to own again is a marigold. Good marigold. Uh, is, is great carnival, in my estimation. Uh, and it glow, goes so very nicely with your white or ice blue or purple or whatever other colors you can find. But neat, neat tankard, uh, often with, uh, in white with kind of a stretchy effect up here. And for those of you that saw the white sweet meat and felt of it and had questions about its authenticity, feel the top of this uh, and then remember about that sweet meat. Very similar feel to it. Uh, blackberry compote uh, with a basket weave back in green. Um, compotes, I think, are kind of fun to have because you can put it on a lower shelf and look down on it. You can put it on a higher shelf and look into it. And so you have some variety that you can do with uh, um, Compote. Fern uh, in amethyst. Um, pretty compote. 
not a, what, I think three colors, something like that. Not a lot of colors in, in this uh, pattern. I remember when you could buy these for $500. Uh, because there are some really pretty poppy show plates in Marigold. And then the next thing I knew, they were bringing 1500 to 2000 and up. Uh, again, look at the color, look at the iridescence, look at the pinks. Um, just an absolutely beautiful piece of, of glass. And it's not the door prize. Some tumblers up here we'll take a quick look at. Um, Peacock at the Fountain in blue with a very prominent N right in the bottom. Uh, there are also a lot of these tumblers around and they are different. Uh, undoubtedly the, uh, made by Dugan, the, no N in them. If you count the little bubbles and if you count the feathers and the plumes and so on, there are some differences. And typically, and they're also shaped differently. The Dugan tumbler seems to be uh, more straight up and down, whereas this one has a flare to it. That's how I tell them, at least. Uh, singing birds in marigold. Uh, again, look at the marigold. I just, uh, I feel sorry for people, in, including any of you, that don't like marigold. I mean, that's gorgeous, gorgeous glass. Uh, springtime tumbler in uh, amethyst. Um, springtime, if you didn't know it was spring, if you don't know the pattern, it can be confusing because it's got a butterfly on it, it's got a flower on it, it's got another butterfly, uh, it's got a, like a fence or something down here at the bottom, but it is springtime. Pretty set. And this one is called near cut. Um, not many of these, what did you say, Roland? Two. Uh, a, a geometric. Northwood is not known for its geometrics. Here is one. Uh, I, I didn't know what this was, but I thought it was swirl, and I guess it's pretty obvious. A little swirl tumbler in uh, Marigold. Uh, water lily, uh, and there are a lot of water lily tumblers out there, and there are water lily in Fenton, and there are water lily in Northwood. And there may be other water lilies, but uh, this one is a Northwood. Lots of tumblers, not many uh, water pitchers. Uh, grape and Gothic arches. Both of these, Cherry and Cable and Grape and Gothic arches, are two of the earliest patterns that Northwood made. And both of them were made prior to 1908. And so these are old molds moved over, made into what we now call carnival glass. Uh, both of these are very, very old patterns. Um, and again, this marigold is, is my kind of marigold, really pretty. This is pretty, um, but this is my kind of marigold. And I think the only other tumbler is this one, and I haven't the foggiest what, um, cherries, yeah. It's a uh, uh, enameled tumbler, and uh, um, some hard work went into that because it had to be done by hand back there. Okay, I think I've covered all of the glass. Anyone like to make comments about Northwood or questions? Uh, Memphis? No, I did a t uh, punch cup, I think, didn't I? Yeah, the white punch cup. Oh, did I not do this one? No. There's always somebody that checks. <laughs> uh, beaded cable rose bowl in marigold. I don't know if it can get any better than that. And I guess that's what we're all looking for. That's what we upgrade to. I had two of them in my room last night, and one of them was like this, and the other one wasn't. And I felt sorry for the one that wasn't because it was nothing wrong with it, but compared to the one that, like this, uh, it looked like, um, you know, a distant cousin. So uh, if there are no questions, please feel free to come up. Ask the owners if you want to touch uh, or feel or just hold it in your hand or take it to the light. 
Uh, but thank you for coming.